Good morning, rock stars. Welcome to the Retail Leasing Playbook Podcast. Today, we will be going over chapters 12 and 13 in the Retail Leasing Playbook. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And if you have the book, I hope you're enjoying the book. I really tried to break it down into different chapters so that you could dog ear the pages, make notes, and go back to it and refer to it when you're having a challenge in your leasing career or in your leasing activity. Uh, I tried to arrange the table of contents so that the chapters would be broken out into different skill sets and things that might happen while you're trying to lease a shopping center or two or three or 20. And again, I hope you're enjoying the way we laid it out. So chapter 12 talks about meeting the tenants. So it's so important when you have a portfolio of shopping centers, even if you only have one or two, to meet all of your tenants. Go in and introduce yourself as the leasing agent and just chat with them and see how they're doing. You know, maybe they don't report sales, so if there's a way to start creating a relationship, you can get that information and share it with your company. And I, what I always do is I make a handwritten note and throw it in the hard lease file or maybe put it on my sales reporting chart, but, but write not official, you know, obtained by a visit with the tenant on whatever date. But capturing that information and sharing it is crucial uh, for the success of the shopping center. Uh, understanding who at the center is your mayor. Every center has a mayor. And they take that uh, position proudly. And, but sometimes they can be no, no, noisy, let's say nosy buddies and get involved or, or what, what in South Florida, a lot of Yiddish is thrown around. So sometimes those mayors can be yentas, right, gossipers. So you really have to be careful what information you share with the mayor uh, sometimes it's good if you want the information to get spread around quickly, uh, share it with the mayor. It usually gets uh, through the grapevine pretty quickly. And I, um, depending on who, who the mayor is at my properties, uh, I sometimes can use them to hold a key, hold some plans. Uh, I, in particular, don't really like the lockbox situation where I send a prospect or a broker to get a key out of a lockbox. Now, I obviously benefit by living within 10 minutes of my six shopping centers, and I know you guys don't have that opportunity, but every opportunity that I can personally be with the prospect to show the space versus using a lockbox, that's what I would prefer. But, you know, and just finding out, looking at the merchandise, do they have thin merchandise? Do they have uh, more merchandise than they can handle? Is an expansion opportunity in the cards for your tenants? So just going in, talking to managers, you know, I remember once we were, I was consulting with a client and uh, it was with a Regal Cinema and my client had not gotten a hold of the real estate manager, he felt that he was getting very nervous that they were avoiding talking to him. So this was about nine months out and they were worried that they weren't going to renew. And after a visit to the shopping center and a chat with the manager on site, he learned that they were, they were in for permit for a huge renovation. So, so much information can be gleaned from talking with your tenants. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And, you know, definitely, I know a lot of leasing agents say, I don't want to do that because all they're going to do is complain. You know, for sure, that could be something that happens. Um, but just listen. Don't promise anything, right? Don't get into trouble with your property manager where, you know, they complain about something. You're not in the the mix, and this is something the property manager has been dealing with for months with this tenant. So let the property manager know you're going to go talk to the tenants, maybe get some advanced um, info or intel from your property manager as to who maybe are the troublemakers or, you know, who are the people that are positive and optimistic. 
Uh, that way you have the heads up, right? So, um, so definitely let them know. And, and, you know, having a great relationship with your property managers is so important. I always recommend leasing agents acknowledge the work. I mean, it, being a property manager is just an awful job. The tenants don't like you. Your boss never thinks you're doing enough. All you're doing all day long is solving problems. It's really a crap job. So anything you can do, maybe a little $20 uh, Starbucks gift card or, you know, a movie theater gift card or a cupcake or chocolate-covered strawberries, just do something to acknowledge the hard work of the property managers. I promise you it will go such a long way. Also, I think it's important to visit your properties different times and days. We once had a property, a public thinker center in South Miami, and the traffic and the demographics during the week at this property were completely different than on the weekends. The demographics completely shifted. So make sure that you uh, have an opportunity to visit your properties at nights and on the weekends and see who your customer is. Uh, that's a little tip. And then, um, and then obviously you need to know, you need to do a physical audit of your vacancies. You need to know what are the, you know, how many times have, have people said, what are the ceiling heights, right? So, so now what we're doing is we're going into chapter 13, and that is doing a physical audit of your properties. So you need to know what the dimensions are. That's pretty easy. And I'm sure everyone knows that you can count ceiling tiles to, if you don't have the exact measurement, most of the spaces have two by two or two by four ceiling tiles. So you can just measure a quick estimate uh, if you don't have the exact uh, measurements. You know, what's the condition of the space? What are the ceiling heights? You know, people ask, is it to the joist or the roof? You need to know that. It's helpful to know who was in the space before and why did they leave. Uh, by the way, a, a little rock star tip. If you um, don't know the ceiling height, you can take a broom or like a long stick and gently push up a ceiling tile to see, you know, behind the ceiling tile how far the roof goes up. Um, you need to know if your bathrooms and hallways are ADA compliant. You need to know, take a look at the parking. Are there three handicapped spaces right in front of the space? Um, or are you next to a salon that does two and a half million dollars so there's never any parking? Need to know that. So you're prepared for those objections when you're showing the space. What are the signage rules? What are the HVAC, the air conditioner specs and conditions? It, it's obviously wonderful when you can do an HVAC audit to know, well, the unit's 30 years old, it's definitely gonna need to be replaced, or it's brand new. You know, the tenant prior, the prior tenant just uh, um, had replaced it six months before they moved out or a year. What's the electrical ampage? Is it 110, 220, 400? Is there gas? Is the gas uh, in the ground or is it tanks? Um, where do you do deliveries? In my new Starbucks center that I just built, the back uh, of the two vacancies literally back right up into the Starbucks drive through So um, we had an issue with that. We're like, well, where are these people going to get deliveries? So you need to know that. Uh, what's the parking ratio? And the municipalities set this. I'm hopefully, um, I'm lobbying municipalities because I think the ratios should be changed now that ride share is, you know, growing in popularity. And, um, and then just uh, when, do you have any expirations coming up or renewals or are tenants not doing well because is there a possibility to combine spaces, right? Is there, in, in the next two years, can you, can you look ahead and think that maybe these two spaces together and maybe you've got a bunch of people calling you for that size? Can smaller spaces be combined? And then, you know, knowing who's coming up for renewal, what they're doing in, in, in sales, you know, what, just thinking about the future. I was consulting with a REIT in South Florida and they had this courtyard space, these, this courtyard with a bunch of small spaces 
They could never keep it occupied. And adjacent to it was a large 8,000 square foot furniture store. And they had just given us notice that they were, or they, they were, they were very delinquent in rent. And I went to the bosses and I said, would you, and I, I realized we could probably knock out the courtyard and build about 20,000 square feet. So I went to them and I said, I think we could get marshals to take a look at this. Would you spend the money if we could get a Marshalls? And of course, the REIT said 100%. I called the rep for Marshalls. I said, haven't you guys been looking in this area a long time? She said, yes. And today there's a Marshalls. So just keeping an open mind uh, for opportunity, right? And then understanding, as we've spoken before, impulse and destination. Impulse spaces need to, impulse tenants need to go in impulse spaces. Destination tenants need to go to, into destination spaces. Uh, impulse tenants can never succeed in the elbow of a shopping center. If you try to put an ice cream store in an elbow of the shopping center, they're not going to make it. Um, they want the end caps, right? They want the spaces with exposure. But if you leased to a physical therapy in the end cap, you've just hurt your own leasing ability because you have put a use in a space that really is only, you know, that certain tenants can only succeed there versus physical therapy can be wildly successful in an elbow because they're a destination. So those are the tips for chapters 12 and 13. I hope you're enjoying this podcast. If you are, give it a like, share it, post something on social media that you're enjoying it, and certainly subscribe so we can keep you up to date every Monday when we launch a new version, a new episode of this podcast, the leasing, the Retail Leasing Playbook Podcast. Thanks, Rockstars. Have a super week.